Hey, welcome back to Deck Badger Radio on AM 950. We're having a conversation about this apocalyptic imagination that got stirred up just a little bit by the claims this week that the end of the world as we know it was going to befall all of us on May 21st, and it didn't happen. And I will tell you that I'm one who didn't ever think that it was going to. I didn't even have a moment. But my sidekick here was raised in a tradition in which they talked and wasn't raised in a tradition, but was reared in his faith in a tradition in yeah. which they would talk about this rapture thing in very vivid and real terms. And, John, you even had a little heart palpitation just sort of deep down in your in your gut somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I had, you know, have, have since have no uh, uh, no trust in that in that idea at all. Oh. But. But at, at 5.30, it did the, the thought did cross my mind, you know, uh-huh. and, I, and I did just have like this little subconscious shiver of fear, yeah. you know, kind of go through me. And then I thought, well, there's nothing I can do about anything right now. So, <laughs> so <laughs> hold on tight. So I went and had something to eat. Well, well and here's, here's what I think is, is interesting about this. And we're not responsible as people for what we believe, right? Sometimes belief just happens to us and we have to do something about it, but we don't control everything we believe. We don't own everything we believe. Very often we have these understandings of the world that simply exist along with us and we have to deal with them. And some people were told from the time they were young children that there's a whole narrative of life and that somewhere in it, God's destruction of the earth and the salvation of some was essential to understanding that. And I understand uh, that August has invited one of the people of his group, James, to be on the phone with us. And James grew up in a tradition where they talked a lot about this, that it was a significant part of their narration of how they should understand the world, their time in the world, and how they should live. James, thanks for being on Doug Badger Radio. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. What what tradition did you grow up in? Are are you comfortable telling us about how that has affected you up until this date, and what thoughts were running through your mind when the uh, you know the the United States and other people in the world were sort of chatting about could May twenty first actually be the Rapture Day? Yeah, I was brought up as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and so they teach that Armageddon is coming any day now. They think we're living in the last days, mm-hmm. uh, and that we've been in the last days since nineteen fourteen. Um, in they used to kind of guess about when the end would be, but now they kind of leave it open-ending ended because they've kind of got been wrong. They have been wrong so often about I that. See. Yeah. So, but they don't believe in a rapture. So, like, yesterday, I'm sure had no... I'm not a witness anymore, but I'm sure that yesterday had no meaningful effect on them. They just lived their lives as they would have otherwise because they don't think the rapture is a biblical teaching. Mm-hmm. They just think that uh, someday, very soon, God's going to just create Armageddon, you know, destroy all the wicked people, all the badness, all the sinful people, but that the physical earth would still be here. Mm-hmm. But, but he would sort of clear house. Yeah, the people um, here. he would clear house in a big time, because witnesses are pretty certain that they're the only ones who would survive, and they make up about 1% of 1% of the earth's population, so huh. almost everyone would uh, be murdered by God at that point. Now, I'm sure that, that many Jehovah's Witnesses have different experiences with their teaching and their faith, but for you, was that confusing or harmful to you in how you should think about relationships and friendships and how you live in the world? Did it seem like it, it affected you in, in negative ways to be thinking that the God of the universe was going to destroy nearly everyone else that you would ever see on a given day? Yeah, definitely, because um, your witnesses are told that they're part of the world, but they're not supposed to. They're, they're in the world, but they're not part of it, if that makes sense. Sure. And mm-hmm. um, so they were saying, yes, we have to go to work to make money. The government says we have to go to uh, primary school and secondary school, but that doesn't mean we have to be friends with the people we're around. So I always kept at arm's length. I didn't go to their, you know, I didn't go to sleepovers with my friends in mm-hmm. school. I didn't consider any of them my best friends. My good friends were just the people in the congregation. And, mm-hmm. and sometimes this caused conflict because mm-hmm. you got to see these are decent people. Besides the mm-hmm. fact that they're not Jehovah's Witnesses, I can't really see what's so wicked about them that they deserve to be killed by God, mm-hmm. too, you know. Mm-hmm. And especially once I started dating, because my whole family were witnesses, but my wife's whole family, most of them were not witnesses. Oh, boy. So I, would, I would get to know her grandmother and her aunts and uncles and her cousins, and I'd think, these are great people. They're uh-huh. really nice. They have us over for dinner. It's too bad that Armageddon's coming next year and they're going to die, you know, yeah. so <laughs> you're yeah, still I, conflicted. And, and I'm sure that there's times now, now you can say that with a bit of, you know, uh, irony in your voice, but were there times where it was like, no, that actually really bothers me to think that the, that the God I'm going to spend eternity with really hates everyone that I'm actually quite fond of? Yeah, it's, it's difficult because you're supposed to think that God, which whom they call Jehovah, is your mm-hmm. best friend. So on the one hand, he's your best friend. On the other hand... He's going to kill your grandma, you know, or your mm-hmm. children if they're mm-hmm. not witnesses. So, yes. 
which, which essentially is what my parents think, because I'm not a witness anymore. Yeah. Yet they think Jehovah is their best friend, and they think their best friend is going to kill their son and his two small children, you know? Right, right. Well, well James, thanks, thanks for uh, sharing a piece of your story, and I think this is what's so powerful about it, especially those of us who... I'm a, I'm a particular religious practitioner, and I'm a pastor of a church, and I take my, my Christian faith quite seriously, but I have the same fears about the kinds of, of messages that are being sent in religion that when I think about it in its sociological sense, what it does to people, that I think it's really quite concerning for any religious person, because... Every religious person I know wants to behave the way God behaves. That's at the core of, of a religious expression, right? What God's into, I'm supposed to be into. What God is passionate about, I should be passionate about. I want to be like God. And then if you're told that God hates those people and will destroy them, yeah. it can start to translate in some people's minds as, I should then have that attitude toward those people. Right. Yeah, it was and one that's thing really think concerning. people were just misguided. You know, that's right. why we went door to door because they were misguided, and that's understandable. If someone out of ignorance doesn't know anything, right. but to also think they're deserving of death because of that, I couldn't quite make that logical that's right. leap. That's so. right. That's right. Well, well, um, it's not my place to apologize, but but I am sorry for the fact that you <laughs> well, had to live you. through an experience like that, and I think that's really, really difficult and really harmful. And part of what I think religious people need to do is have a story of 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 hope and a story of mutual understanding and not one that seems to um, threaten people in a way that um, puts God as opposed to them. But I'll tell you that that puts That's me right, on the right. odd side of, of many religious conversations, so I find I myself... Might, yeah, but, but I think that you're better for it. <laughs> ah, well, thanks, and I think you are as you're well. Thank August, you. yeah, th- thanks a lot, James. Thanks, yep, th- th- thanks for calling in. Jam- uh, August, is, is that part of what worries you in, in the atheist community? Is that in this sense, to borrow a Christopher Hitchens phrase... Um, God ruins everything, religion ruins everything, that it makes bad people out of us? Well, it doesn't ruin quite everything, but (laughs) this is uh, certainly an idea that's purely religious, and it's psychologically harmful to a lot of people. Uh It doesn't exist in the atheist world, you know, that you're undeserving and only certain people are going to get saved. I mean, you know, when the sun eventually fries us, it's going to fry us all, you and me, you know, John. Uh, if the meteor hits, it's not going to discriminate between you and me. Uh, right. And in the, in, in the atheist community, what's the, what's the hope for that harmful thing, for that harmful narrative to change? Because atheists are, in our country, in the United States, is, is a minority group, right? So I know, for now. I know atheists, yeah, and I know atheists often feel like you can't express your atheism in this country without retribution, right? There's a narrative of concern that we would never elect an atheist president. It's hard to be a public atheist and, and, and achieve well in social climbing circles and jobs and so on. Uh, so people are nervous about saying, I don't think about God that way, or I don't think that's that at all. Uh, what's the hope for, for atheist community when it comes to religious uh, n- narratives of the destruction of the earth and of the world? Though? Well, this end of the world scenario was great, great for us, just showing how bad uh, religious prophecy is. Oh, I see. Uh, our numbers are growing. It's still, like you say, in the small towns, it's tough to be an atheist, yeah. but we're growing, becoming bolder. We're going to be back here with August Berkshire, and we're going to chat about some of the Bible passages and how we should think about those when it comes to this religious narrative. And, uh, you know, for those who are waiting for the rapture, Tom Petty reminds us that sometimes waiting is the hardest part. When you want to find great local restaurants owned by great local people, look no further than eatlocalminnesota.com.